So hopefully you're still here. I'm going to try to teach you this and hopefully this is going to I'm going to try to make this as painless as possible as you're learning how to program in C++. Okay. So in this lesson here, we are going to go over the mathematical operators. So the first one here, well first I want to declare a variable here. So let's say I have int and this time I want to make coins here. Let's say, and let's say coins is equal to 50 here. Okay, now let's say I have another variable. Let's say I still have apples here. I have apples here. Now, this can get annoying here. If I have to declare this variable here, oh, so I got 30 apples here. Well, so what I have to do, I have to declare a variable here. Then somewhere else along the code, I got to assign it something else. Well, that can be annoying after a while. So let's say I back up. And uh, I can declare and assign a variable at the same time. So I can say int apples equals 30. And I can do that all in one program statement. And that'll keep things a lot neater, neater, and I'll keep things a lot easier. And you'll, and that's probably recommended here. I recommend you do this every time, anyway. And I, I do it all the time because it's easier to read. I don't have to make take up two lines just to just to declare a variable here but I wanted to show you that as it was two separate steps here so now that we got a handle on the uh, assignment operator here let's learn how we can add things together here so <clears throat> let me just make oranges okay so what we can do we can we've already seen the C out statement here or the uh, addition operator here. I can output the value of apples plus the value of oranges here. Now this is automatically going to be a one operation here. So I don't have to make a separate variable here. And it outputs 60 to the screen. Notice last time here we had to make a separate fruit and we set it equal to apples plus oranges here then we were able to output the fruit well as we just seen here we don't have to do that here we can act, we can output large operations here but let's back up a little bit and let me just type it again we can just output apples plus oranges here Ooh. apples plus oranges I want to delete this fruit variable and <clears throat> that's the addition operator we can also use the subtraction operator we have apples minus oranges here and we should get zero here so if we had 40 oranges here we should have negative 10 apples 30 minus 40 is negative 10. Now, let's move on to the multiplication. We can multiply our apples by oranges here. We get 100 or 1200 something. We just multiply the apples by the oranges. And this is the multiplication here. Let's say we, we can also... Yeah, so we can... Just say, let's say we have 3 by 4 here. And, um, so we can change those up whenever we'd like here. So we know how to add, subtract, multiply, but we don't know how to divide yet. Well, let's see. Let's say 
I take apples divided by oranges here. Well, what is 3 divided by 4? It's going to be 0.75 here. So if I run this here, I get 0. Well, why is that? Why do I get 0 here? 3 divided by 4 is 0.75 here. Let me show you something else here. Let's say I change oranges to 2. What's 3 divided by 2? It's 1.5. But it only gives us one here. Why is that? Well, these are two integer values here. Since we're taking an integer divided by an integer here, it's only going to truncate to the nearest whole number here. So if we, so if we had 1.75 here, it'll just cut off the decimals and it will not round. If we had 1.75, it will just truncate the value to one here. So we need so this is a good time to bring up a new variable type. So let's just say here, let me delete these two here. If I had coins divided by three. You know. Fifty over three. It's gonna truncate to sixteen here. Well, what if I made this a float here? A float is a decimal type. It holds. Can, it can. It just holds a little bit more values here. It, can, it just holds decimal types here. So most of the time, you may want to be using a decimal type variable. And this time, we actually get the decimal 16.6667 here. Notice the degree of precision here. It only prints off them. Um, four decimals to the screen here. Well, there's another, uh, there's a way we can print off as many significant figures as we'd like. But I'm not going to go over that right now. Right now we're just learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So notice that we can use float here as our variables here. And it's just, it, just, it can hold decimals. So we can make, we can initialize this to 50.1 or maybe we can make it like a 89.765768. And when we uh, execute this operation here, we'll print that operation to the screen. So that's what the float does. We can now store decimals here if we want to use float, or we can use integer operations here. So we know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide now. That sh uh, hopefully that was pretty straightforward. But now we want to. I want to go over one last operator. It's called the modulus. The modulus operator. Now, this only works with integer di type variables here. So let's say I had int x. Let's say that was equal to seven. Now let's say I had another variable y. Let's say that was equal to 3. Okay, and I want to get rid of these coins here. Now let's say I had x divided by y. So 7 divided by 3, we have already seen it's going to give us, it should give us 2, right? Because it's going to truncate that um that one third off that remainder well the mod operator gives us the remainder of that uh, quotient here so if we take seven divided by three here this modulus operator will give us the remainder of that so if we take three divided by seven here we go on notepad here or paint if we take 3 divided by 7 here, 3 goes into 7 2 times, and uh, we get a remainder of 1 here. So this is second grade math here. The remainder will be 1 here. So let's say we had something else here. Let's say we had 22 over 3. Well, 3 goes into this thing here 7 times, and it'll give us a remainder of 2, or 1. Oops. 
So we had 23 here. The remainder is 2 here. So that's how the modulus operator works here. It'll only give you the remainder here. So let's say we had 2 divided by 3. Well, 3 goes in the 2 0 times, and it's a remainder of 2. So we can always get the remainder here. Let's say we had 70 divided by 2 here. Well, 2 goes into 70 35 times, but we don't have a remainder, so this will be 0. So let's just make a little small application here. Let's ask a second grader what um, 129 divided by 5 is. He will say the quotient is x divided by y with a remainder of x mod y. So let's see what it is. The quotient is 25 with a remainder of 4 here. Now notice I forgot to put a space right here. Now we can see it better. The quotient is 25 with a remainder of 4. So if we took um, 6 divided by 5 here, we know that the remainder is 1. It's 1 with a remainder of 1. And that's how we can we can use this modulus operator here. Now notice that just just like I said here, this cannot be float here. Watch what happens if I change these to float. These have to be int here. And if we go to compile this here, up there are build errors. Imagine that. It says illegal. The left operand has the right type float and the right operand has to write type float here. They both have to be int here. Okay? The mod operator only works with int. So that's that's one of the advantages of using int here. So if you know it's going to be an integer value, I recommend trying to stick with the int here. Now there's certain cases that where the um, you can only use float types or you'll get compiler errors. So so that's it here. Now, look how long, just to wrap this up here, I just want to review this C out statement here quickly. Remember, I can put these on different lines here, and it, as long as they're in the right order from left to right, it'll still have to put the same code here. So I can put all these on different lines here. This is just to show you here. I can just put all this on a different line here. And actually, I want to try something here. I just want to try to split this up to see if it'll still work. Nope, it won't work like that. So that this is one of those special cases where all the uh, the quotation marks have to be on the same line. But okay, so so just kind of hang in there. I know this is a this is a little boring here, but uh, we got to get through it so we can get to the the stuff that's more fun. And we we can um, actually start thinking on our own here because right now we really can't do much. The only thing we know how to do is just print stuff to the screen here, which isn't really that cool though. But we're starting to learn how to use some of the syntax here, and um, I want to start on then. Let's just keep on moving through these tutorials here and learn how to write some cool software.